Hi, AME 394. So I wanted to take a second to talk to you about the next project that we're going to do in class, Project 1, Composition. So we're moving outside of snippets, which are our uh, kind of skill building exercises, and now we're moving into an actual project uh, where we're going to take some time to kind of thoughtfully compose something and make something interesting. So if we take a look at the assignment here on Blackboard, uh, we can see that uh, the assignments, expectations are kind of laid out here for us. And what I want you to think about is I want you to go back to when we started talking about the principles of design, right? Balance, emphasis, movement, pattern, repetition, proportion, rhythm, variety, unity. And I want you to use those as a kind of launching point for how you're going to put together something that's interesting, uh, compelling, that you find... Uh, exciting in some way. And I want you to focus on one of those elements, right? So the first thing to do in this assignment is select one of these elements that you want to actually focus on. You know, pick a principle that you really want to dive into. Next, uh, you should make sure that you, in your network, right, include a, uh, a call out to that. So make sure that you tell me that you're working on balance and then also make sure that you use the description of balance. And you can find that in uh, the assign in the readings I think is where it is. It's here inside of the course um, and it's certainly inside of the sample uh, that I posted as well. So I want to see what it is that you're actually focusing on and then the description of it. Both of those things are important. Next, what you should do is I want to I'm going to look at your composition and I want to see uh, the uh, principle that you've s uh, selected reflected inside of the composition that you've created, right? So if it's about pattern, there should be there should be some pattern in it, right? If it's about emphasis, emphasis should clearly be the kind of thing that you're exploring. Next, I want to make sure that there's uh, an image in your network that you used as a part of the research for your project, and we'll talk about how you can grab a um, a uh, photo from the internet and kind of dump that right here into Touch Designer really easily. We'll also look at how you could take a, a photo, extract it from the web, save it as a file, and include it in your, in your network. Either one of those ways is a perfectly fine way of getting uh, your research image to me, but I want there to be a research image inside of your network. Your project needs to be encapsulated inside of a container. Right? We've done that already. That should be old hat for you. Uh, the catch is, this time I want the resolution to be 1024 by 768. Specifically, the resolution of this container right, needs to be set with an expression. And we've done a lot of this already. We're going to practice this some more. So I want to see that you're referencing something else. Uh, you can reference a table. You could reference uh, another operator. It doesn't matter to me what it is that you're referencing. But the resolution needs to be 1024 by 768, and it needs to be as an expression, not just hard-coded into your container. Again, your network needs to be well commented. I want to see your name and the date inside of your comments. This is especially important if you're going to make something over the course of several days and you have revisions that you make. Give yourself some uh, breadcrumbs. Make sure that as you're changing things in your network, if you need to leave a note for yourself, that exists somewhere inside of your project. Your network needs to include at least 10 operators. That should be easy for us to do. There should be some animation in your final composition. Again, that's old hat for us. We already know how to do that. Um, and then we need to include a button to toggle between your inspiration or your reference image and your final composition. And we're going to take some time to talk about how we're going to do that in class. And finally, uh, we're going to take, we're going to start to focus on performance. So I want to make sure that your uh, composition is running at at least 40 frames per second, right? So I want to talk about just a couple things here before we let go or before I let you uh, back into the world of actually making some things, right? So how do I know about performance, right? Well, if I know about performance. That's up here. That's my frame per second count. And I'm running really slowly, uh, partially because I'm screen recording. So I'm capturing all of this um, with a computer and it's unhappy about rendering this uh, live and capturing this uh, HD image at the same time. Go figure. All right. So I've got something that's encapsul encapsulated, right? So you can use, this is the uh, principles of design toe file that's up on uh, the uh, blackboard, you can actually use this as a place to get started from. So we can see here that this thing is encapsulated, right? Uh, my project inside of it is encapsulated. It lives inside. In this case, I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 operators already here. If I look inside of my geo, there's actually 11, 12, 13 operators in here. 
And then my button has got another 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So easy peasy, making sure that there are 10 operators that you use shouldn't be a hard thing to do at all for us, right? We can see here that this button, right, we're going to talk about how this button can toggle back and forth between a reference image um, and your actual composed image. We'll go through how we can make that happen. And then finally, we can look here and we can see that in this particular example, turn back on, um, my resolution, right, for my container is set with a table. So my table over here has all of that information in it. And if I change the contents of this table, 1024 by 768, I can see that all of my other containers change along with it. So I'm going to take one second here just to clarify that a little bit more um, because I know that's one of the things that we're going to have, uh, we're going to talk about a lot and might be a little bit confusing. And I want to make sure that you have another piece of reference material to see how we can do that with a table uh, or how we can do it with an operator. All right. So here's my container, right? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a table dat. We haven't used uh, dats a whole lot and that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and edit this. And actually what I'm going to do is I'll just turn on my edit mode here. Uh, and I'm going to give it some exact dimensions. I want a table that's two by two. I'm going to make it viewer active. I'm going to call this height and width. Excuse me, I want width and height. And I'm going to call it, uh, it's going to be seven, 1024 wide and 768 tall. Right? All right, so how do I get those numbers over into here? All right, so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write an expression. That should seem like that's coming for sure. And I'm going to first tell it which operator that I'm asking for. So in this case, I'm asking for table one. Give me the contents of table one. And now I need to specify where in table one I'm looking for some things. And specifically, I've got to do that with rows and columns, right? RC. So the first thing I need to do is I need to specify the row that I'm going to use. And in this case, I want to take things that are coming out of here, out of this one row. So I want things out of the one row for the width. And for the height, I want things that come out of the height column. And in this case, I could do one of two things. I can specify that with the title of the column, the header, right? Or I could do that by saying, by giving it the number of the column. In this case, that's one. Those are uh, both the same way. Those things both do the same thing for me. I like, uh, when possible, using headers because that makes it a little bit more human readable. And when I come back to read this expression and I want to see what it is I'm doing, I can actually see that and read that a little bit easier uh, than if I was just trying to figure out where in my column or in my table that particular uh, reference lived. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. Right, so for, to start, I'm going to tell it that I want the contents of table one, and then out of table one, I want the first row, right, the first row here, and I want it from the column that contains the header, and it's important that this is in quotation marks, width. And I totally got those backwards. Oh my goodness gracious. Width goes here and height goes here. I'm going to be infamous for making mistakes every time I talk to you guys. All right, right? So there we go. That makes it very readable for me, but also uh, easily referenced here inside of my network. Okay, well, what's another thing I could do, right? Because I might also uh, make something in here movie in, movie file in, and I've got an out along the way. That's going to be the last thing in my network. This should look familiar, right? Now the out though, if I look at the info for it, this is 10, or excuse me, 1280 by 720, too big. So I could do a couple of different things. Uh, one option might be something like a fit top. So if I drive this through the fit top before I drive it here to my out, I could specify a resolution in my fit top that I want to use, right? So here in my fit, I'm going to go to the common page and 1024 by 768. I'm going to pick the resolution that I want there. And then this should look very familiar, right? We're going to come up here. And in this case, the expression that I'm going to write is going to be, I'm looking for an operator. And I want the operator that is 
uh, in parentheses again, inside of me, located inside of this container called out1, and I want the thing called width, right? Same thing here, I want the operator that's inside of me called out1, and I want the quality from that called height. Okay, nothing changed, that's great, that's because the numbers are the same here inside of my network, 1024 by 768, as they are here outside of my network. If I change these dimensions, 800 by 600, we can see those numbers change, right? So those are two different ways to make that happen. I'm happy with either one. It doesn't matter to me which one of those that you choose. But what's in here, what's in the width and height for this container needs to be an expression. I really want us to practice what it is to put an expression in here to drive these things. It'll be really important the more you start to build things on your own and the more you start to build things that are kind of uh, self-contained in a lot of ways and modular in nature. And then last but not least, here's a perfect example of the kind of thing that I want to see in terms of uh, the, the kind of principle or the principle in question that I'm exploring, right? So here's my name and date, great, wonderful, and then I've also got balance, that's the particular thing I'm looking at, and here's a description of what that particular thing is. All right, so that's a lot of information, but hopefully that'll be helpful as we dive into this assignment, and I can't wait to see what you guys make. All right, have a good time, and uh, happy programming, everyone.